G'day everybody, it's Dave and Steve here again, uh, back in the Heartland Workshop, ready to do a whole bunch of work today on the bikes. This is going to be a big day of putting stuff on and taking stuff off. Uh, first thing we're going to do is change out the tyres. So uh, the standard Dunlops that come on this bike, um, are, are, they're shit. Yeah, they're very average. They're yeah. Um, they're really not made for off-road work at all. They're very much a road tire, and even as a road tire, they're shit. Um, Steve got a puncture within his first 30 kilometers of having his bike, so, um, and they also contributed to your little little bingle the other week. So. Yeah, I, I didn't manage to keep them uh, rubber side down, but um, I'd had quite a lot of um, um, near misses with them, even just betting the, the, the first bike in. Um, and to be honest, I could have lived with them on the road, but off-road, just nothing. You just no front end grip. Yeah, I must admit I've I had a few slides with them as well on the tarmac, so uh, without a lot of provocation. So we're very happy to see the back of those. So we're going to replace those with a set of Motos Tractionator tires, the adventure tire made by Motos, um, specifically designed for these big style adventure bikes, whether it's these or the KTM's or the BMWs. Um, from all reports. A fantastic tyre, so we're going to fit a set of those up today. We got them from Craig at the Adventure Motorbike Specialists uh, up at Cessnock. So if you're interested in the set, give Craig a call, he'll send them to you. So, uh, And we've got a few other bits and pieces as well. What else are we putting on? So first things first, we've got to put a SW Motec centre stand on yours, so yep. we can actually do a bunch of other stuff. We've also got the little skid plate that's going to protect your shock. Um, next, we'll do the tyres, uh, and then we've got um, prototype skid plate from Boomop to put on. Okay, Check cool. Check the other, other side of the bike. Beautiful. All right, we're going to get into it. We'll give you a bit of an update as we get through the day, and we'll show you a bit more close up some of the stuff that we're putting on the bikes. So here in Oz, the non-ABS bikes don't come with center stands. So we had two options, because we have to have a center stand for off-road, need to change tires. We could either go the OEM ones, which were pretty expensive, big and ugly, or we could go with SW Motec. No points for guessing which ones we chose. Thing, other good thing about the SW Motec ones is they've got a little skid protector that goes and protects the bottom of the shock. The only mod we've had to do to them to get them to fit nicely is clearly there hasn't been a lot of these sold yet because there just wasn't quite enough room around the world so we've just clearanced them a little bit. So the fun bit's going to be getting them on, getting the springs all tightened out but we'll get into that in a sec. task is to fit the spring. Um, it's a little bit tough to do. I didn't want to spend $100 on the, on the spring stretching tool, so I've made up my own little one. And I'm going to use my leg pad to stretch it out. So let's see how it goes. Okay, I shall call this attempt one. Okay, now that we've got the center stand on the bikes, next thing to fit is the bash plates. So we kind of scoured the world looking for bash plates. There's a lot of different companies making them now for the Africa Twin. Uh, it was kind of hard to find something that we really liked. A lot of them provide a fair bit of coverage for the bottom of the motor, but not a lot of coverage for the sides. And one of the things we wanted to do was try and protect those engine cases on the sides as much as we could. Um, and then we spoke to Assen who runs Boomot in Bulgaria. Boomot's the company that provided all of our luggage for the bikes. And we were so impressed with the way that luggage was made that when Assen told us that he was making some bash plates for the Africa Twin, uh, we jumped at it and, and ordered a couple. So uh, he has an Africa Twin himself and he used his bike as the test bed for these. So obviously he's put a lot of work into making it right. So 
it's a beautiful bit of kit. It's quite big, as you can see, but it's actually not that heavy. It's, it's quite thick alloy, but it's, the weight is really manageable, I think. The fittings on it are beautifully, beautifully made. The only problem that we had is in Europe, all of the bikes come with the factory bash plate. So the fitting kit is designed around removing the factory bash plate and using some of those fittings to attach the new one. Our bikes didn't come with the factory bash plate because in Australia, the base model doesn't have it. So we just had to get a few little bits and pieces from Honda, just the standard fitting kit for the standard bash plate, just so that we can make this one fit. But once we've got that, everything goes together nicely. So we'll go and fit this now and then we'll give you a better look at it. projects we're doing here with fitting up the bikes and just in general uh, we really want to make sure we've got the right tools I'm a huge fan of Bosch for the same reason I like Honda the stuff just works it's built really really well and we've spoken to Bosch and they're quite happy to come on board and support the project so we're quite happy to um, and quite excited to use some of the different tools as we kit the bikes up okay now we've got the bash plates on we've got the center stands on next job is the tires so this is the standard Dunlop shit wing or something Trail Max, it's called, Trail Max. But we've called it the shit wing because these are really bad. Um, they're obviously more of a road tire than an off-road tire, but even as a road tire, they're garbage. Um, and they puncture fairly easily as well. So they're going. And what we're replacing it with is this. This is the Motos Tractionator Adventure Tire. So there's a couple of different versions of the Tractionator. Uh, if you've got one of these big heavy bikes, make sure you get the Adventure version. Uh, the other ones will wear out a fair bit quicker. So um, as much as this is a much more aggressive tire in terms of off-road performance, you can see the big tread blocks there. From all reports, we've spoken to a couple of people that have got them, they're getting really good life out of them on the road too. Part of that is because of the rubber compound. So there's a lot of natural rubber in these tyres, which also helps create a lot of on-road grip. So really keen to get these on and, and try them out and see how they go. One thing you do have to be careful with with these tyres is they're a lot heavier than the old ones. So, for example, there's the front. So we actually weighed them compared to the original fitment tyres. And the difference between the front tires was, Stephen, what was the difference? 1.6 kilos on the One, front. 1.6 kilos. Plus, you also got to remember, we're also putting in heavy duty tubes, which are also a lot heavier than your standard tube. So front tire alone, you're looking at probably another two kilos on the front end. Now, that will make a difference to your suspension, but even more importantly, it increases the gyroscopic effect of the tire at high speed. So it makes the bike harder to turn. So particularly for highway riding, you're just gonna have to be aware that you're not gonna be able to attack corners probably the way you did on a road tire because these are heavier. So it's gonna take a little bit more effort to turn the bike. You've also got to take into account the fact that knobby tires generally don't have as much grip on the road. That said, I've seen some guys on knobby tires carve up blokes on sports bikes. So don't get too worried about that. But you do need to take into account the weight might even mean that we need to make some suspension revisions, but we'll wait and see once we get them on and see how the bikes perform. Okay, we've got the new tyres in. Well, we've done the front anyway. But the other thing I wanted to show you while we're here is we've also put in a fender lift kit. So one of the things about adding knobby tires, these tires will fit under the standard guard, so that's no problem. The only issue is when you start encountering some muddy conditions, mud can build up under the guard and eventually the wheel will actually lock and throw you off. So not a good idea. So one of the things we got was a, a lift kit, which basically lifts the fender up about an inch. So they're available from a company called Rugged Roads. Uh, they're not in Australia, but you can order them online. Uh, and it's just, you'll be able to see down there, just, it's a little attachment, just lifts the whole fender up a little bit, gives you a little bit more clearance. So we've chosen to run some Barkbuster handguards on these bikes. The OEM ones that came with them are just plastic crap. They're great if you are green laning um, and just try to get the wind off you. But if you're dropping the bike, which, look, I don't plan to do, but realistically, I will, I've already done it once. Um, it'll just stop the levers from breaking, which although we'll carry some spare levers, it's an absolute pain. So 
just don't worry about it. There are really two, school, two schools of thoughts with running bars. These have got a full wraparound protection. So the only danger with these is that, sure, they're great for keeping trees off you, but what happened to me when I actually binned my bike was my hand actually went in and snapped up, breaking all the bones inside there. Now I've got half a metal hand. Um, most, a lot of the guys, like my mate Phil, who likes to crash his KTM all the time, they run little flappy ones that just basically open up, um, but they're not gonna protect the levers, so we're not using them. All right, we're, we're done for the day. Um, that was a big day. <laughs> that was a big day in the shed. Uh, thankfully, we've had plenty of Bundy to keep us going. But, uh, right. Not enough. Yeah, exactly. Um, so today we've basically, we've got the handguards on, we've put the fender lift kits on, uh, we've got the bash plates on from Boomot, and we've changed the tires on the bikes. Now, anyone who tells you that changing tires by hand is fun or is easy, get your tire lever mm -hmm. and repeatedly jab it between their ribs until there's blood coming out of their ears because they're clearly morons. They're either lying or they haven't done it. They're Poses. idiots, absolute yeah. idiots. Yeah. Now we, we could have gone to the shop and got them done, um, but we kind of wanted to change the tires ourselves just so we knew exactly how to do it. So that if we get stuck in the bush and we've got to change a tire with a puncher, we know how to do it and we've got all the right tools. So that's pretty much the reason we went through this process today. And what better place to do it the first time than in the garage with the fridge full of piss. Pretty so, much, yeah. Exactly, so in terms of the tools we used. Mm. A couple of these little guys, so they've got, we found ones that actually match the bolts on the axles, so a few less tools to carry. Yeah. And I think three levers is the go. Yeah, so they're, they're actually tire levers with spanners in the other end. Um, this guy here is just a longer tire lever, well worth having, it's, having three of them makes the job easier. Mm. And having a longer one, just with that extra leverage, just particularly to get that last bite, or sometimes the first bite when you're mm. getting the tire off, uh, it makes a really big difference. The other thing that we had was these little plastic gizmos. They were shit. They're designed to go over your rim and protect the rim so you don't scratch it. They lasted all of about 30 seconds before we'd pretty much torn through them with the tire levers and, yeah. and then they were, the rims were getting scratched anyway. They're shit. Don't buy them. Um, stupid me, they were five bucks in the shop. There was another set there for 20 bucks. I bought the five dollar ones. I wouldn't bother with either. I think they make the rim too big and it's even harder to get big tyres over it. It did make it harder to get them off. Mm. Um, one of the things we should point out with these Tractionator tyres, they are designed to run as tubeless tyres. So for those guys that have tubeless wheels, you can run these as tubeless tyres. Consequently, they're quite a stiff construction. Um, and that makes them a little bit harder to get on and off mm. when you're in the field. But, for sure. But it is what it is. Got it done there. Got it done. So that's pretty much it for us today. We would normally jump on the bikes and go for a ride. But we've had far too many Bundys for that. So yeah, up for the day. I think the only thing is to get some more Bundys and <laughs> go and get all the bruises off the knuckles. Yeah, go and yep. wash my knuckles clean. Very good. Done. Pretty much from here, next thing's riding. Next thing's out, our first, uh, our first trip is coming up shortly. So uh, we'll let you know very soon what that is and uh, what the story behind that is. So some of you will find that really interesting. So stay tuned. Mm -hmm.